And we're pleased to have our first talk today by Tanmai on Open Policy Agent. So let's welcome our speaker. Thank you, Matt, and uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, so this is going to be a short talk on Open Policy Agent. Uh, so the Open Policy Agent package helps uh, us to enforce policies in applications. Uh, before we start, a short take on what do we mean by a policy. So policies are uh, rules, uh, rules uh, which we can query. We can pass uh, input, provide some inputs when we query. The policies themselves may have access to some data which is static. And with all of these, the policies can evaluate a decision. And that's the decision in which we are interested in. So uh, to give an example, um, let's assume we have a system, uh, an accounting system, where users can log in, but only logged in users are allowed. And uh, since it is sensitive, uh, it's not going to allow anyone outside office hours. And except the boss, who is allowed at all times. But when an audit is going on, only the auditors can access. So you see how the rules build up. They build up in complexity. And they may also change over time. And uh, new rules may get added. Old rules may get changed or removed. So um, it's a bunch of things, right? Um, and the, the the, the motivation of like having a policy engine is uh, um, uh, usually when you uh, build something large, uh, the people who want to set these policies or change these policies and the people who are doing the rest of the stuff, the, the, they are uh, usually not the same. Okay? So you want something uh, separated um, so that the concerned people can be changing the policies while we can just use them, use the policies, right? So that is where OPA comes in. So OPA is a rules engine or a policy engine. Um, it uses this high-level declarative language called Rego to define policies, uh, which lets us like uh, uh, do policies as code. And it has a very simple APIs, which makes it easy to integrate the engine um, um, into applications. Um, and uh, it helps in obvious ways. Uh, so it offloads the decision making to a separate component while keeping the enforcement within your uh, business logic, and which leads to simplification. It uh, simplifies compliance because now policies can be centralized. Decision making is centralized. Audits are simpler. And integration is easy because it is API based. It can be used as a library or a service. And uh, so easy to integrate at any point, any en enforcement point. So Open Policy Agent is the package which brings all these goodies to, uh, to be used easily in Julia. It encapsulates OPA. OPA is the Open Policy Agent um, for Julia applications. So it has a few modules. Um, the service module, which is the engine itself, the decision-making engine. The client, uh, which we use at the enforcement points. And it also encapsulates the CLI, um, the OPA executable as a tool. And uh, there is this fourth thing that I mentioned, which is a plugin to consume partial evaluation result. Now, this is a very interesting and powerful thing. We will see that in a little bit. Uh, we'll see, uh, explain that. So the service module um, helps in starting OPA as a service. It monitors failures and restarts and keeps it running. And the client is essentially an open API or REST client, which we can use it at different points. Uh, in our application at enfor uh, enforcement points. Uh, the CLI, as I mentioned, uh, wraps the um, uh, OPA uh, command line. And all the command line commands are now available as Julia uh, methods, uh, the example of how we can use it. Yeah, and now coming to this interesting point of partial evaluation. So uh, it is possible to query uh, OPA policy by not giving it the entire set of uh, uh, parameters it is ex expecting. We can, we can only send a part of the values it, is, it, it needs to evaluate a rule. And what OPA will do is, uh, if using those partial values, if it is able to arrive at a decision, it will return that decision. But if it is not able to arrive at a decision, it is going to give a partially evaluated, simplified uh, rule. Okay. So the simplified rule can be again evaluated later with more data. 
it can be uh, taken to a new place evaluated it is in the form of a ast and it can be then transformed to a different form which is useful so what we have in open policy agent is a way to plug in processors for this ast right so in open policy agent we have included a processor for converting these partially evaluated rules to sql conditions var conditions because we needed to uh, evaluate that in a database uh, we shall see uh, some um, we shall see a demo of that sorry okay all right so here um, i just uh, start using the package and this is the policy this is a policy for the same accounting system i spoke about i gave an example about so no one is allowed by default this these are the business hours uh, allow all users during business hours and the boss is allowed at all hours but only when audit is not happening and allow only auditors when audit is happening during business hours so this is our entire rule set uh, written in rego we start a opa server and then we create a client to interact with the opa server and this is where i'm initializing the policies uh, in the opa server this is not the usual way when, uh, how things are done usually the server itself will be configured with the policies um, but since it's a demo uh, this is e easy to do as well now this is a method uh, that queries our policies um, and then gets the result and you can you can see i am using partial results and i am going to transform that to something useful uh, that we'll see right so this is our method uh, now everything is ready we can query our policy engine uh, let's ask if users are allowed during business hours when there is no audit uh, users are were logged in audit is false and they are trying to log in um, at 10 o'clock on a tuesday and uh, they are allowed are users allowed 1 o'clock in the night they are not is the boss allowed at the same time yes but is the boss allowed uh, when there is an audit no and this is the inter interesting bit we can also query it to find the list of users who are allowed to access during an audit and it is going to give a partial result which we can now uh, change to some form like this so it says if the role is auditor then it is allowed similarly we can find the list of users who oh, can I access outside sorry. business hours is the boss i i i miss this room uh yeah so that's all i had uh, if i have time i can take questions great thank you speaker